Hey, Internet. Today, I want to talk to you about why I allow AI to interview me before I do serious research. So everyone talks about the importance of prompt engineering and getting the most out of your AI. But I've talked about this before where I think that in the future, and we can actually pull the future forward with this tactic I'm going to show you of how we can allow AI to actually get the most out of us. And instead of trying to craft the perfect prompt, I'm actually going to show you how I use O3 Mini High to interview me. I then have O3 Mini High write a, a crafty prompt that I can then feed back into O1 or a more uh, intelligent reasoning model to then get more out of that model for a specific task. With that being said, let's get into it. So here we have a beautiful picture that has been generated for us by GPT-4 image generation something something. Oh, and uh, what I want to show you here is this is the concept that I've run into, and I've talked about this a few times of how useful this type of thinking is and how I think this is going to take over uh, most of the prompting that we do in the future. Where we as the human, we're kind of confused as to what we want. So AI is going to help us uh, understand our intent and then how we can explicitly communicate that intent in a way that they can utilize for their own purposes to help us achieve our goal. Now, this little spectrum here is something that I've kind of thought through. So right now, this is where we are. So right now, everybody's getting better at prompt engineering so they can craft really uh, smart, intelligent prompts to get the most of their AIs. But over time, and I think this is actually happening today, it is actually happening today, we're getting further and further down this side of the spectrum, where eventually we'll get to the point where AI starts prompting us. And they this becomes the dominant way we interact with AI, where it understands all the context around our intent, our goals, our, our failures, our successes, all that stuff. And they then can coerce us into directions that we would like to go based off of our over macro goals. And they can help us do that through prompting us, getting uh, our uh, miscommunicated intent in an explicit way so we can take action on it. And I'm going to show you exactly how we're, be, we're able to actually pull this future forward by uh, leveraging these tactics I want to share with you. So this is the tactic we're going to use. And I have some beautiful graphics here for you. Uh, so what we're going to use, we're going to use deep research. So I'm sure many of you have heard of deep research. There's a variety of uh, different offerings for this. So there's, uh, there's Grok, there's Perplexity, Perplex, I'll do that. There's ChatGPT, there's the Googs, Google. All of these different providers offer a form of deep research. And this is actually one of the first agentic use cases that have been adopted by the masses. So this is an a, a agent type of use case. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to have O3 Mini High interview us so we can craft a beefy prompt that we can pass to O1 to do the deep research for us in a more effective way. Now, why are we using O3 Mini High? So we're using this one is because this is probably one of the fastest uh, reasoning models that are pretty high quality. And the reason we want speed is that it's going to ask us a subset of questions in a, in a kind of a, a reoccurring way so it can craft a prompt based off of our context. So this is just a basic prompt I pulled together. This isn't fancy, and this is something you can definitely improve on. But I wanted to show you kind of a template of how you can start. So here we have the intro. And it basically states that, hey, I want to create, uh, I want to create a strong prompt for an AI to go off and do research for me on X topic. So this is the topic that you would fill in of the thing that you wanted to research and understand more about. I'll blow some constraints of what I'm interested in, but I'm not sure what else to include. So these down here are the constraints that we're aware of, the things that we definitely want the AI to know and to understand when it's doing research on our behalf. And this can be three to five sentences. It could be 10 sentences, however long you want it to be. Then I say something else that this is really important here. So can you ask me a question one at a time? Each answer will inform your next question. Then at the end of, uh, at the end of this questioning, you'll then craft a beefy prompt with plenty of context, so I can then do a longer form research report for me on, on behalf of another AI. And I probably can write this better so it's easier to read. Uh, but really, the Mori story is it's going to ask you questions. And the important thing is that every single question it asks me and I answer, the answer should inform the next question it asks me. And it's going to keep all of that context in its brain when it creates that end prompt that's quite beefy for me. And that's what we're trying to get to, and that's the end goal. And um, before I actually go into the example, I wanted to take a quick divergent to stress the importance of when you're prompting a reasoning model, it's different than prompting a generative model. And what do I mean by that? Well, there's two different types of models. So there's reasoning models, which you have all heard of and you're playing with right now probably. And there's generative models, which is something we've known from the past. So reasoning models, this is like O1, this is O3, this is uh, DeepSeek's R R1, I think it is. Um, there's Grok3. 
I think they have a reasoning component to that. Uh, there's 3.7 thinking from Claude. There's all these different variants. But in the past, we had GPT-40. So let's just do, uh, let's just do four. <laughs> I'm writing so well. I'm getting better, internet. You can admit it. I can admit it. It's getting better. So we have 4.0. Uh, we have 3.5. Um, we have, I think, Grok 2. Uh, all the Gemini series. And actually, 2.5 Pro now has thinking from Gemini. All the Gemini series models. So all of these over here, these are generative models. There's no reasoning component to it. And in the past, what we used to do is we used to add chain of thought to these to make them think. But now that's baked into the model over here on the reasoning side, we don't need to do that. So the way that we prompt these models over here is different than how we prompt these models. And that's what we're going to talk through here in a second. And this is kind of the structure that I've created based off of this uh, blog post, or I think it was a tweet that kind of went viral on X and all that stuff a little while back, a few months ago, where when you look at the structure here, I'll zoom in here, there's a few things we're going to do here. So the most important thing is that when you ask a reasoning model a question or to do a task, you want to do, you want to give it the what, but not the, the how. The how is something that we used to do with generative models, where we say, I want you to write in this way, I want you to do a task in this direction or this specific um, kind of path or scenario. But the model will figure that out themselves. And they'll do that through their own reasoning process. So what we need to focus on is the what. We need to say, this is exactly what we want, and you figure out how to do it. Because you're the one that has the intelligence, you're the one that's doing the reasoning. So at the very beginning, we set our goal, we give it one to two sentences of the what that we want, not the how. After that, you can add this part here. This is um, sometimes necessary, sometimes it's not, depending on what you're trying to achieve. But you can give it a response format. So say I want a list, I want a pros and cons, diff, etc. And then also we can give it a warnings. So avoid these types of things if you've run into it in the past. And then last and most importantly is the context. So this, by far, is the most important thing that you can give to a reasoning model. And that's why we're focusing on this specific element of this with the tactic I'm going to show you now. So context is king, and that's what we're going to try to improve on. So I'm going to give you an example here of something I've done for a friend uh, last night, actually. He was asking about where he wanted to move, and he gave me some constraints, and I wanted to give him tips and tricks on how to do this. So we're going to go to, I think it's this one here. Yeah. So here's the con here's the prompt that I gave you previously and the, uh, the item here. And then here's some of the constraints he gave me. And then after giving me these constraints of where he, what he wanted to move to and all the constraints associated, then it started asking questions. So it's like, okay, so here's here's some questions around this. Here's some additional questions here. So it's basically getting narrow and narrower. And as it gets more deeper and deeper into clarifying what this person actually wants and the intent they have for their move, they can encapsulate all this into an explicit prompt that's very beefy and is useful for a deep research uh, method. So you ask all these questions, you answer all these questions. At the very end, once it finishes, it gives you a prompt. And this prompt, you can see, is, is quite long. And you'll basically copy and paste this prompt because it gives you up above like all these numbers here, all the constraints. So this is basically the lens at which I want you to understand me and my interests. And down down here, it gives you the task. So this is the task of which I, what, what I want you to do based off the questions I answered from O3 Mini High. I then pass this off to different deep researchers. And this is the output that I got from the model. I think this was around 27 pages long for the report. And it gave a pretty uh, thorough understanding of what I was interested in or what my friend was interested in, which was cost of living and crime. And then it gave you kind of a rundown of the different places that they should consider moving to for the next five years. And I did the same thing for Grok. So I got 157 pages searched here. I think there was 27 searched here. And then there was 70 searched here for perplexity. So I ran it through Grok, perplexity, and OpenAI. Uh, and it's important to note that each one of these deep researchers, they have different, um, I would say, uh, kind of value props. So I think overall, ChatGPT is by far, in general, if you just had to choose one, is probably the best. And this really comes down to two things. And length doesn't always equate, and there's actually not an H before the T in length, if you're just wondering, internet. Um, those are connected. There's uh, length, and then there's also uh, citations. And the citations are more consistent, I found. So the length is longer and the citations are more accurate for OpenAI. And from my experience of playing with all these different deep research models pretty extensively, this equates to um, quality. So this tends to be better compared to the others. But with that being said, for instance, Grok, if you're doing research on some cutting edge tech, likely it's going to have a better answer for you because it has access to X, so the Twitter platform, and it can go through that data set and see what people are talking about in relation to this different type of tech topic you're thinking of. So if it's AI, it's likely going to have more information on AI because that's where all the AI people hang out. So it's depending on the type of topic you're researching will dictate which deep research tool you want to use. 
And then lastly, you have perplexity, which um, usually is just cheaper and, and free. So you can just run this for everything. If you're using ChatGPT Plus, you're limited to, I think, 10 right now, 10 deep research um, calls a month. So you have to be kind of very uh, specific on what you want to ask here. And you don't want to waste those because you only have a few. Uh, but perplexity, I think it's unlimited. So we'll do like a little infinite symbol, but it's the wrong way. <laughs> and then uh, Grok, I think it has a pretty high number as well. So you want to use these two heavily and then be very careful with how many you use for this one. Unless you have access to pro, then you probably think you have like 50 to 100 per month or something like that. All right, so that's my tactic internet. Those are my methods. I hope you found this useful. And if you did, please uh, share it with your friends. And also, if you have any questions, feel free to ask questions to me and leave them in the comments, both in this video and other videos, because I actually answer your questions inside of videos when I have office hours. And if you're interested in working with me, I have a company called Gradient Labs where we help people incorporate AI internally to increase your productivity. So there's a link below for a 30-minute call that's free to see if there's a good fit between the two of us. With that being said, internet, I'll see you next time.